So let's say you have data in Superbase for your website backend, internal tool, whatever it might be. If you have data in Superbase and you wanna be able to edit it, maybe you are looking for a way to connect that to Airtable and you might be wondering, is that possible? Is it hard? How do I do that? How long does it take? That's what I'm gonna answer in this video and I'm gonna answer it by showing you the actual setup start to finish. Don't worry, it's not gonna take long at all. Um, but the actual process of connecting Superbase to Airtable, to async, all of the data that you want, uh, none of the data that you don't want. So let's get started with it. Now, here's my Airtable base that we're going to be connecting and syncing to. And here's the Superbase table that we're going to be syncing over there. We're going to use a tool called WhaleSync. You can go to whalesync.com, create a free trial for, I think it is two weeks. And once I log in, I can click new sync up here. And like I said, we're going to go from Superbase to Airtable. So we'll grab Superbase down here, authorize this. Just kind of your standard auth flow. If you have multiple organizations, grab the one that you're wanting to work in, and then it's going to pull out of there whatever project you have. Um, if you have multiple projects, you can select here. I just have one project, so we can just save that. And then on the other side, it's going to be Airtable. So we're going to go through, again, the same sort of standardized thing, but we're going to add the base here, and I've got my Airtable base. Very creative name. Thank you. Uh, we're going to grant access to that. There we go, my Airtable base. And now we are to the fun part, which is actually mapping the tables. So we could have a bunch of different tables in Superbase here, right? This is our, our project overview. There could be a bunch of tables in here. I don't even know, sorry, where they list the tables, but we just have one table. And so this isn't gonna be too complicated, but if we had a bunch, you could be picking them here. We'll grab directory listings now. If you look over here, we've got this YouTube video planner, but that's not actually directory listings. That's that's unrelated. But that's okay because we're just going to create a new table, or rather, WhaleSync is going to create the new table for us. So we just select new table there, hit create table mappings, and there you go. Now we have a new table created in, in Airtable. So like I said, this is super easy, super easy, super fast. So all right, now we're going to create fields. We can just copy those from Superbase as well. No need to do anything manual here. We'll pick all of them because the ID is already there and the rest of them, yeah, I want to be able to do that. So now WhaleSync is just going to go into Airtable and start creating all of these fields. And there you can see it is being created and we're done. Okay, we're actually done with the sync setup right now. If we just hit save and continue and activate, we're finished. But I want to show you one thing before we do. But just as far as if you're timing this or have a stopwatch, we're done. Um, okay, so this here is showing arrows these mean, of course it's showing arrows. What these arrows mean is if you wanted to do just from Airtable to Superbase, you could click this one, which it's saying we can't because this is a read-only Superbase field. And if you wanted to do just from Superbase to Airtable, so in other words, you want the data to be moved from Superbase to Airtable, but you don't want any changes to push back, then you could do that. So that's a good way to like protect data, but still sync it. In this case, we're doing two-way, except that this one is a read-only Superbase column. So even if we put anything over here, it's just going to get overwritten. So it doesn't matter that you know what we're actually doing with that. And then the rest of them are two-way. But individually, you can pick one way this way, one way that way, two-way. Anyway, just wanted to call that up before we move on. And then also there's filters. One other thing is that you can actually create views in Airtable. So if you're doing something different going the other way, you might want to create a view in Airtable and use that as your source of filters. That way you can change them whenever you want in Airtable. But... That said, save and continue, activate sync, hit confirm, and we're done. Now this is going to take a bit. It's going to check out Superbase, see what's in the tables, move that stuff over to Airtable. Shouldn't take long. Yep, there's one, there's two. Okay, now we're like done, done, done. The data has already moved. Everything's complete, but that's not super fun. So let's actually play around with this stuff a little bit. So, okay, let's add another record and let's call this one another record description. Okay, oh, and then let's give it a name, new one. Okay, and then let's, let's actually move the name column over here, make that a little bit, make that look a little bit better, uh, make this narrower. All right, cool. Now, I'm guessing that that operation is already, yeah, it's already been picked up, so that's already here, but where is their refresh button? Um, let's just refresh the whole page. Yeah, so here's the new one in Superbase from Airtable. We created this in Airtable. Whale sync synced it across to Superbase. As you saw, there was almost no configuration. It's it's just click a couple of things. We'll tell Whale sync where to create the table. Tell Whale sync which columns you want, and then hit activate, and everything's moving across. So we can see with this one, we can edit the. Oh, that's read only editor. Wait, what? Uh, did I break something? I cannot edit in read-only editor. 
uh, I don't actually know what I did there. Let me see if I can insert a new row. Name newest one, description another description, part two. And let's see if we can write this one. Again, this is actually a perfect example of why I like syncing stuff across because using some of these database UIs, especially if you want to do like multi-column, multi-row stuff, it's just, it's not the most intuitive thing out there, right? It's not awful, but when you're actually working with this data day in and day out, it really, really slows you down. So yeah, we can come over here, new one, newest one, everything's come across. Um, we can put newest one, three there. That should head the other way here in a bit. I'll have to refresh the page, like I said, because it's not refreshing by itself. Uh, oh, and yep, there it is. But if ever you're wondering where things are, the operations show up here. If there are issues, they show up here. Some services, uh, you can rescan them. If like if you're working with Airtable views, you might want to do like a full scan when you're done making changes to the view filters. That'll just make sure that WhaleSync is able to pick up any of those changes because Airtable doesn't actually send out a webhook when they do that. If you're working with filters and views, um, you can always scan now right there. But there we go, we're done. However, uh, let's go the other way. So I've got this YouTube video planner right here and maybe I wanna have this in Superbase, right? So we can come over here and let's come back to our sync and go to our table mappings, edit. It's gonna ask us to pause the sync, that's fine. And then let's add a table mapping. And, oh, sorry, I went to the wrong sync, this one. Table mappings, edit, pause and add table mapping. For this one, we're actually gonna grab the grid view of my YouTube video planner, and we're gonna bring that over to a new table in Superbase. So, kind of fun, we're going the other way, right? But we're in the same sync here because we're still connected between the, the same Airtable base and the same Superbase project. We can still use the same one. We can hit continue. Now, if we go over here, we can see we've got another table already created in Superbase for us. So let's come and copy fields, but this time we'll copy from Airtable. We can grab all of them. And this is a great example of why you might wanna deselect some of these. So Airtable created time and record ID, we really don't need. Let's take away checked and, um, yeah, I think we'll keep the rest of those. So we copy fields, we can come over here. Well, never mind. it's not gonna refresh for us. Oh, here's the refresh button. I knew it was in here somewhere, but it used to be at the top, so they've changed that. Uh, let's see, we should be getting, we should be getting some columns here. You know, maybe the refresh doesn't actually work. Yep, okay. Refresh apparently only works for the data, not for the columns. But anyway, whale sync's done. Whale sync did its part. So now we've got these all two-way synced across. We can hit save and continue, and we can reactivate the sync. And when we do that, if we go to the sync overview, we should see that it's gonna scan Airtable. It's gonna find a bunch of records, because again, We've got quite a few in here. And then it's gonna start moving those across. And I won't, I won't make you wait the whole time, but as soon as we get one across, then we can uh, we can call it a success. So we'll see if Superbase's refresh works. Refresh, refresh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, I obviously telling you that it was going to be quick, broke everything as it always does. <laughs> should I pause the video or should I just get a coffee? There we go. Now we've got changes going over. There we go. All right, everything's working again. Look at this, beautiful. So much data. Love it. All right, and there you go. That's how you connect Superbase to Airtable using WhaleSync. Super great tool, extremely easy to use, but unbelievably powerful. Once you've experienced being able to edit database data from tools like Airtable, Notion, or Google Sheets, uh, it really just changes the way that you think about how your workflow can be and how ergonomic and smooth your workflow can be. So 
I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and see you again next time.